shadows and creating the image. Thanks again for joining me in this video. Hopefully everybody's staying safe during the current crisis and hopefully it's given you a chance to spend time with your family and also perhaps learn new things for yourself. In this video, I wanted to show you how I created this image here. This actually happens to be my favourite image that I've created using Luminar. I, I edit all my landscapes with Luminar because I love the software. When it comes to the fantasy and surreal work, I enjoy doing them, enjoy the challenge of doing them as well. Uh, but this one here happens to be my favourite one. Uh, and it's from a, a series of images. If you saw the last video, you know it's from a series of images that I'm doing currently during the time of isolation. The challenge of this image was to create the shadow. And as you know in Luminar, you can dodge and burn to create your shadows. But I wanted a quicker way of doing it. Uh, a quicker and I think more effective way of doing it. You may disagree, that's totally up to you. So I created a black JPEG that I could manipulate to create shadows for all of my images when I needed a shadow. So I'll put that below if you want to download it, you can have it. It's just that, as I say, it's just a simple black JPEG. But it's the thought process behind what you're creating and what you're using it for that might just define whether it's a good shadow or a bad shadow. The image you'll see me editing during this video is not the final image. The final image is the one that I started with and I took my time with that one because I wanted to perfect how I got the shadows and how I did them. So for you to sit and watch that, it'd be a good hour and a half, two hours of video. Uh, so I didn't record that one. I sat and took my time with it because it was a an idea I wanted to come up with to see if I could do it first and it worked. So this is the video you're getting. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, now that we're in Luminar, the first thing we're going to do is add a new image layer. And the new image layer we're going to use is background image. And we're going to click and drop that in. And aspect ratio wise, that should be the same. And it is. So what we've got to do for this is I have got to zoom in here. And I've got to get rid of everything here. This was actually the start of another image. That's why it's got healing and everything in it. This was actually the start of another image. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use the mask option with the brush. I'm going to use erase, take the opacity to 100, take the softness right down to about, I'm going to guess about two, three, two will do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush size down as well. And I am just going to draw through this. I may actually increase the softness because that's quite a hard edge for this. So what I'll do is I'll stop at that and I'll increase the softness up a wee bit. Let's try nine. And possibly even more than nine. So I'll just finish off this area and then I'll go back and I'm going to take the softness up even further. 17. Just draw a bit in there just so I can see the edge. Yep, that looks better. And what I'm doing, is, you notice what I'm doing with the softness is the fact that I want it to blend the background in. I don't like these hard edges you can see here. So if I've got the softness up a bit, it softens these edges down. And not because I took the peak off that point there, but it actually softens and it blends the pixels even better. So what I'll do for this is I'll continue through this so that you're not sitting watching me cutting out around here. Okay, now that I'm at this area, what I can do now is I can zoom out and I can take the brush softness to zero and paint out as much as I possibly can. I will do this on a bigger scale so that it's quick now. So I can take that out all the way down through here. By doing this, it allows me to remove and have a clean background. That's the main aim of this for me. I wanted as clean as possible a background for this. I 
and I'm moving around the screen holding down the space bar just in case you're new to Luminar and unsure of any of the shortcuts for it. Take that out, take this area here out. Now I could have used a sky replacement but as I say I wanted this totally and utterly clean. When I first did the image I used the sky replacement but wasn't happy with the results that I had for this so I went back and I redid it and I cleaned the sky that was there out totally and I preferred the results for that. I'm also not too worried about what's going on here because as you know we're going to add clouds, moon and a sun flare in. So there we have it, a clean background ready to start the edit. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the saturation and the vibrance of the base. So I'm going to pull that back to about there, bring out all the vibrance, and then I'm going to pull back the saturation just to get a kind of grey lunar type look to this. And I'm okay with that. I'm also going to go into the light and I am going to pull the exposure back slightly, not too much and push the smart contrast and then pull the highlights back again. Just to about there. That is okay for me just now. I'm going to leave the shadows where they are. I may tweak this slightly, but it looks as if it's going to be how it is just now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the astronaut and to save time, to save you watching me cut round the astronaut, I'm doing it the exact same way that I did the edges of the landscape there. So the next thing you'll see is the astronaut up in the page. Okay, I actually had to save that there as I got delivery at the door. So what I'm going to do, what I'll tell you I've done, is I've brought the spaceman in, I've cut round them, round in the edges as best I could, and I have also lightened the layer up slightly, and then I had to save it. So that's why you only see one layer now. I had to save it and bring it back in. So from here, what we're looking to do, the next stage of this is go into the augmented, is go into AI sky replacement. And for the AI sky replacement, I'm going to choose a selection and I have custom skies here. And as you can see, the one that I'm going with is that one. And I'll bring that in. And there it is in the document now. So that, that's actually quite nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at that. The blend mode at the bottom, horizon blending, I'm going to take down. I'm going to shift the position just ever so slightly, just to about there. And then I am going to relight the scene to match this. Just to give a little more emphasis up here. I'm quite happy with everything else that's going on. For this next section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the augmented sky. This is one of the moons of Jupiter, so I'm going to add that in. And at that height, where it drops in, I actually really, really like. I'm quite happy with that, the size that that drops into this document. I'm actually quite happy with that. It just gives a sense of scale, everything with this. It is a fantasy image, so I'm quite happy with how it looks. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add in a shadow. And I'm going to add a new image layer for the shadow, and I'm going to show you how I went about this. Because as you know, Luminar currently isn't capable of creating shadows. So this is how I went about adding a shadow. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do this one relatively quickly. When I was doing it for myself, I took my time with this one. So I'll, but I'll explain what I did as I was doing it. First thing I'm going to do is layer transform. This is just a jet black JPEG. Take it down in size. And I can drag it wherever I want on here. Okay, so I'm going to place it there. And I'm also going to rotate it slightly and I'm going to bring it off the screen about there. And I don't need as much as that. I only need it coming from that foot there. So I'm going to drag it to there and I'm going to click done. 
Now the first thing I'm going to do is Luminar creates the masks for you. So if you choose paint, it creates a reveal all mask. If you choose erase, it will erase what you can see on the screen just now. So when I choose edit mask, I'm going to choose paint. I'm going to be erasing it and I'm going to be working around with it to, to get it where I want, but you'll see what's going to happen with this. Take the brush size right down. And I'm actually going to take the opacity down. I'm, un I'm aware that some of you can't see this. Right, so what I need to do is I need straight away to create a shadow coming from him. From that foot. And all I'm doing is imagining the light coming from here. So the shadow is going to be quite a long one. It's just in your imagination here. But I'm going to try and replicate what's going on here. So that's going up the back of his heel. And because it is quite low, it's a longer shadow. That's going up the back of his heel. Uh, into the band. And now up the back of his calf. Round to his knee. So that's me. I'm quite happy with that. I may adjust this after I've done it. So now I've got the front of his foot. And the front of the leg coming up here. So I'm only working one leg at a time. It's not one leg at a time that creates shadows though. So now... If I look there, I always work from the bottom. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to paint in there. That way I've got my ground point for this shadow here. I may just take it out slightly. I've also got quite a soft edge in this. Next thing I am going to imagine that there is coming up from about that point there. So it's a long shadow. So that will come up from about there and up to there. Okay, it doesn't look real yet. This is when you decide to try and trick the eye. I'm going to leave the opacity there. I am going to take the softness down. I'm just going to check this, then I'm going to undo it. So I'm just going to check it here. Yep, better edge on that. So I am going to undo Command Z or Control Z if you're on a PC. Then I am going to just imagine what the shadow's like. So I'm going to take that to about there. And his hand is coming down. I'm going to actually strengthen some of these edges as well. Because with shadows, the closer you are to the subject in the ground where the shadow's created, the deeper, the sharper it will be. So if I go back in here and I paint around there, you'll see the edges are a bit sharper there. The foot's not great at that, but... And I'm also just going to create that there. Yes, it's out of sync of where it is on the document, but you're putting in the illusion of shadow. You're not actually creating a proper shadow here. So as long as you can see that it is an illusion, people will tend to relate to it and go, yep, that's the shadow from that. Unless, for example, it's the shadow of a horse when it's an astronaut standing, but people tend to see it as it is. And that's not, you're not fooling Andy with that. You're just showing that you understand how shadows work. In this case, these are not perfect. When I did this the first time, I took my time with this. I'm just showing you how I did it. And I'm just going to get and paint in there. And remember, I've got this image opacity. Once I'm quite happy with it, I'll do that. And remember, the shadow has to take over the undulations of the earth as well. So once I have done that, and I'll take that in, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get into the arrays, and I'm going to take away some of this. Softness 54, I'm going to take the softness up, so I've got a better edge. And I'm actually going to take the brush size up, because I may be painting back and forward in here. And that was just a little bit too much, so I'll go back into my paint option, and start painting back in. And we have that. I'm also going to go back into the arrays and change the back of the leg. It's just too straight for me. So you can see when I did this originally, why it took so long. Uh, just to get what I wanted right. Uh, and the image you'll see at the end is not this image. It is the one that I spent most of the time on. I just thought it'd be a good idea just to show you shadows. And I'll also put, it's just a black JPEG. But I'll put a link to it below. And you can use it in your images for shadows if you wish. Right, I'm going to zoom in here now. I'm using Command and Plus to do this. And I'm going to clean up this area here. So using the eraser, 
and softness of 75, I'm going to again and clean this up. I don't want, for this image, and yet there would be shadow here, I don't want it on it. So, I'm going to take away some of that, and then there as well, and I'm going to take away there. Take the brush size down. And take that in there. Okay, that's quite dark there. That's not dark enough there, sorry, I should say. So if I take it in, it's a bit darker. And I'm going to get it to a point where I'm quite happy. Right, I'm going to go for that. I'm going to take a bit of this heel away though. Just a tiny bit. And I'm going to zoom back out. Right, so you see the shadow there. But as the shadow goes further away, although it's long and low and dark, this area here is further away from the ground plane where the shadow is. So it should be slightly lighter. So how you combat that is using the erase tool. Turn the opacity right down. And I'm going to guess at this one here about 20. And I'm going to make the brush big. Because the bigger the brush, the better the blend. And I'm going to choose a raise here. I'm actually going to make the brush quite big. Right, if I just click that once. You see the shadow lightening up a bit. Just there. I'm going to click again. So we're getting a deeper shadow in here. It's not perfect, but it's a deeper shadow. And then towards here, we're getting a lighter shadow. So that's also giving you the effect of depth in the image as well. So that's how I worked out in this case just a quick way of doing it of getting the shadows correct and it's not as sharp as it was when i originally did it i'd just like to stress that i took my time when i was doing this first one because i wanted it to be as perfect as i could possibly get it yes there still are mistakes but it was as perfect as i could possibly get it there is other ways of doing shadows as well and i've showed in previous videos another way of doing a shadow via dodge and burn but when i did this i found that bringing in a black JPEG allowed me to blend the shadows better than the dodging and burning in these key, in these instances. So I'm going to leave that at that just now. And I am just going to take away a tiny bit of the toe as I'm talking to you. It's really annoying me. So I'm just going to do that, tiny bit of the toe. Then I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add a little more atmosphere to this image. So I'm going to get and tweak the image just via an adjustment layer. In the adjustment layers I am going to pull the light, the exposure back slightly. So we can take it back too much to that or we can leave it around there. I'm quite happy with that. The next thing I'm going to push the smart contrast and this is me just tweaking the image for visual look. I mean, you can see it's not perfect, but as I say, I'm doing this as quick as I possibly can for the actual video. Uh, Sky Enhancer, I'm going to push. And as you can see, it brought that in as well. So that's quite good with that. Next thing, colour, I'm going to drop the blues again. Just a tiny bit this time though. And I'm going to bring the luminance of them down. Just to around there. I am also within this layer. I'm also going to add sun rays. But in this case, that could be anything. We know that that's a sunrise. Just the emphasis on here of sun rays within this would give more depth and dynamic to the image as well. So that's why I'm adding them. And I'm just going to push the amount. And you can see it's up here. I'm also going to warm it right up and I'm also going to warm the sun rays up as well. So now I'm going to place sun centre and I'm going to put them just about there. So you can see that that adds a bit more dynamic to the image and sun radius can take down or build up the glow radius. I'm going to keep that quite high, the glow amount. I'm going to bring in quite strong as well. I'm now going to randomise the sun rays as best I can for this. 
Because remember, I've, I've already done this one. This one took me a wee while to do, and actually, that happens to be one of my favourite images that I've done in Luminar. So I'm going to leave it at that for this. That I'm quite happy with. There's interaction here, there's interaction coming off there. I may change the overall look. To about there. Edit mask. And I'm going to use a radial mask for this. And I'm going to draw that out to there. I'm going to invert the mask and bring that down and drag it out even further that way. So that the glow is going out here. And we're getting not just as much interaction here because of the next step that I'm going to do. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to click done. I'm then going to stamp this layer because I want to add more sun rays. So next, create new stamped layer. Okay, that's us get the stamped layer now. What I am going to do again is I am going to add more sun rays. Do the same again. Sun radius is up quite a bit. Glow radius, quite a bit as well. Glow amount, the warmth and the sun rays warmth. So we have this now. I'm then going to place it in here. And now I'm just going to tweak the randomization of it just to about there. Possibly about that for this one. Next thing, I am going to add a new image layer. And in this I'm going to add the flare. And for this flare, I'm going to go to soft light. So that's the flare put in as well. And that just helps emphasize the glow here. Last but not least, is this glow here must reach the spaceman. So the next thing, add a new image layer. Again, it's the flare. And that will drop in exactly the same place. What I'm going to do is go, I'm going to turn the opacity down slightly just so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to get into layer transform and I'm going to rotate this totally. So you can see what my plans are with this and then I'm going to put it over the spaceman just about there. Done. Turn the opacity back up, find a blend mode, which may be soft light. In this case it is, and turn the opacity of it down because you don't want too much on them. And what I can also do as well is because that's there and I've just got that slight glow on them, that's all I wanted. What I can do now is I can go into edit mask, brush, choose paint, take the opacity right up to about 89, softness right up though to 100 and I can now just paint in the areas that I want the glow on. So you should see that happening as I'm painting here. As I say, I'm not going to be as accurate as I was the first time. I just thought it would be good to show you how I go about creating these because some of them you have to think outside the box and how to get the effect that you're after. I'll take the brush size up and just put a tiny bit down there as well. More on there. I'm going to take the opacity up just in the helmet and paint a tiny bit more in, in the helmet. Last but not least, I'm just going to check to see if I want to add a vignette to this one now. So I'm going to add a new adjustment layer, go into vignette, just to see. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully the use of shadows, hopefully the full build gave you an idea of maybe creating your own images, but hopefully the use of the black JPEG for shadows, if you don't already do it, there's something new for you. If you already do it, why haven't you shared it before? Uh, but as you can see, when you're looking at shadows, the, the surface closest to the object creating a shadow will be darker. As it moves away, it will be lighter. So that's the reason I blended the shadow out like that. 
uh, so that you could see some more of the ground texture coming through. And that won't be true in all cases, depending on what kind of light's being used or what kind of light you're trying to create with it. But overall, that's the kind of best effect and it gives the best form of realism for it. So hopefully you got something from that. Hopefully you enjoyed just watching the edit come together. With it you saw I used a flare. The flare itself I created in Photoshop. Over the years I've downloaded different sun flares and different types of flares. I created this one specifically for this image. But if you've got access to do that, it's a good idea to do it. And I put it in the grey background because I knew how I could blend it after that. And you get different effects depending on what blend you use. So that's where that flare came from. It didn't come from inside luminar itself i'd just like to make that clear hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you'd like to check out some more videos in the channel please check them out below if you're currently not a subscriber please consider subscribing as that would be greatly appreciated as there are lots more content to come remember stay safe thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next video